Hello, adventurers and action heroes. My name is TBS Guy. The Nunu rework is still uh, just chugging along. We just got a peek of uh, his new updated voice lines interactions, and as expected, he is absolutely completely adorable, and so is Willem. But uh, since we don't yet have the full amount of Nunu lore released to us yet, we have the biography, but we don't have his color story, and those traditionally get released alongside the full release to the PBE. So once that happens, we can do a proper what's the deal with Nunu and Willem um, video. But in the meantime, let's do a comparison video. Let's take a look at old Nunu and compare it to new Nunu. New Nunu. New Nunu. To, to new Nunu. To new Nunu. To, to do the old and the new comparison. That's what we're going to do. Because old Nunu, I don't think I'm going to be spoiling very much in this video to say that I think the new one is better, like on every possible front, but... It's not enough just to say, oh, it looks cooler or it looks better. It's, I don't think it's enough to just say, well, it's new, therefore it has better graphics and therefore therefore it's better. I think you do have to dig in a little bit into really try and map out what the differences are that make a difference to the quality of the character. Because it's not just polygon counts. It's not just texture quality. It's not just animation quality. There's more that goes into it than that. And I think I've identified the thing that for me is the primary difference between the old and the new. And... <clears throat> It comes down to what reality the characters seem to inhabit. Because in the new Willem and Nunu, that's how I'm going to say it, new Willem and Nunu are clearly from a fantasy universe. Like, they, you look at them and it's like, yeah, okay, this we're in a fantasy fairy tale world in a far-off fantasy kingdom in some kind of fantasy story. This is not happening in the real world. This is the land of imagination and adventure. And that very much comes across in, in the fantastical characters. Like, that's why I think it's important that the new Willump has six limbs rather than four, because it makes him stand out as clearly a fantasy creature, clearly something made up. Whereas with the old Nunu, well, it's like, what you've got is what looks like a dude in a Bigfoot costume with a kid riding on his back. And there's really, if you told me that this was from some kind of weirdo fantasy game set in the present day in the modern world, I wouldn't have any trouble believing you because really nothing about Nunu himself looks especially like he comes from a land of fantasy and magic. He looks like he could be some kid from South Park. Like really, honestly, if you told me that these two were just high quality drawings of South Park characters, I would believe you because there's very little to tie them to the world of Rune Terra. There's very little that ties them to a world other than our own, especially with Willem, who really does just kind of look like a dude in a big suit, like in a, in a big fuzzy fursuit of some kind. Not a real fursuit, if there's any furries listening to me, but I know a real fursuit is a different thing, but I'm just using the terminology generically. Oh, anyway, it looks like a dude in a Bigfoot suit, let's call it that. A dude in the Bigfoot suit with his son riding on his back, and they look like they're kind of characters who could be out of South Park. Like, they could be from a fantasy universe as well, of course, but there's very little to place them. There's very little that holds them in place to a world of fantasy and magic and whimsy and wonder. Which leads us on to theme. Old Nunu, in his story, there wasn't like, it was, like, Willem was trapped by the Frost Guard and they were treating him very badly. So Nunu was like, that's not nice. I'm gonna sneak him some food. And they escaped from the Frost Guard and Willem was like, that kid treated me nice, I'll, I'm gonna protect him. So, like, there was this germ of an idea of, of a boy and his yeti. Like, it was, it was this yeti that had been trapped and mistreated terribly, and Nunu was the first person who treated him nicely, and so they struck up a friendship, and then they left, right? That's sort of the core of the theme there. And that's a perfectly fine theme. In fact, I posted a snippet of it um, on Twitter, thinking it was the new story, because I hadn't looked at the old story for so long, I'd forgotten what it actually was. And I thought, okay, that's a perfectly, that, that makes sense for the character design. But how much of that is expressed in the character design that we see, in the character model, in the visuals that we've got? Like, this idea that they are bonded by mutual empathy and compassion, does that especially come across in the way that they are relating to each other? Nunu just kind of sits on Willem's back in this strap that almost looks kind of like a harness. Like, you know, like he's like he's harnessed, like he's uh, got um, a bridle on almost. Holds on to his hair and has this expression on his face. Like, what's the relationship between these two characters? Absent any context, if you look at these characters in game, what would you say their relationship is? Is it one of, of like equality and mutual affection? 
Is it one of childlike wonder and kindness and you know, this big, strong, wise beast protecting his young charge? Not really. Does It, it kind of looks like Nunu is riding Willem like a horse, like he's riding him like an animal. It does. They don't. They don't look like their relationship is based on mutual kindness, on mutual empathy, on mutual love, for that matter. That really doesn't come across in the design. The design is much more like. Again, he really does look like a South Park character who's just kind of rendered in a more realistic way. And his arm, by the way, the reason the arm looks so weird is because model limitations in old League of Legends meant that sometimes you had to distort the characters rather drastically in order to get them to work from the top-down perspective. Anyway, that's a whole different story. What's communicated in the visuals of these characters is no connection to the fantasy world, really. Not not very much of one, anyway. No no real connection to the Freljord as a culture, either. And that's because, like, this Nunu was designed way before Freljord has anything like a cohesive visual culture, way before Freljord was based on, like, various aspects of, you know, First Nations uh, uh, cultures from the northern parts of the world, or, you know, Inuit, Inuit culture in cer certain instances, Viking culture, sort of uh, ideas of the old frozen north. None of that was really in there back in the day, and so you get this kid in a parka that could be anywhere, from anywhere, who has a Superman spit curl on his forehead for reasons passing understanding, and this rather inscrutable expression on his giant round face. I mean, I can't overstate just how freaking giant old Nunu's face really is. Like, this is... I don't... If his head is up here, then his neck has to be in here, but his shoulders are all the way down here. How long is his neck exactly? Anyway, that's just, that's just a, a piece of artwork. It doesn't really matter that much. But what you get there is a character who's like... Yeah, sure. It you you could say that it's it's a yeti who was mistreated and Nunu saved him, I guess. But it doesn't really come across in the visuals of it. Like if you have this theme of a boy and his dog, essentially, which is something that Riot themselves have said that was that was one of the themes they really wanted to go for was a boy and his dog. That kind of relationship of of you know a young kid with his you know cool monster friend, some very where the wild things are kind of thematic. This is not really something that gets that across very well. This is not really something that communicates that very well. And with all old League of Legends champions, yes, of course, there were some technical limitations back in the day. They could not, like, they literally could not create a character model as nice as this because they didn't have the tech, they didn't have the computing power. But whether you have the tech or not, that's not really the thing that determines, like, the expressions on the characters' faces as they're looking at each other, the visual aesthetic of what the character looked like. You could have made Willem much softer and more kind looking and sort of uh, sort of more cuddly. You could have made Nunu not look like a schoolyard bully from South Park. Like, I really can't get over how much he looks like a rejected South Park character. But because they really, back when Nunu was first created, they really didn't have that much of an idea where they were going. It really, like many early League of Legends characters, it's sort of more a vague concept thrown together in a hurry because they have to release a new champion every two weeks and then, you know, thrown into the game. Actually, wasn't he one of the original 40? I think it was one of the original 40. I actually can't remember because I think so very little about Nunu. And the result of that in the modern state of the game is that Nunu is a joke. Like, he is a joke. He's a joke champion. He's a joke character. He's not someone you generally pick if you intend to play seriously, he's the kind of champion that you pick and everybody else in game goes, oh fuck, are we, gonna, are we about to deal with a Disco Nunu? Like, are we about to deal with a troll? Are we about to deal with a griefer? Because that's, that's what the character has come to represent because of its gameplay situation, but I think also partly because it's been one of those old champions that just look so old and so out of place with the modern League of Legends aesthetic, with the modern League of Legends gameplay, that it's just kind of like, this looks like a ridiculous relic from a bygone age that really has no place in the League of Legends world. That's certainly how I feel every time I see him in a game, is that doesn't look like it fits here. That doesn't look like it goes here. And so after ripping old Nunu a new one, because there really isn't that much, I don't think, redeemable about it, I really don't like old Nunu. In case that didn't come across, I don't think it's a good design. I don't think it has a lot to say. I don't think it communicates very much. I don't think it gives us any kind of interesting relationship between the two characters who are meant to embody the champion. I don't think it really does anything cool and interesting. But new Nunu and Willem. <sighs> There's something about saying new Nunu that messes with my brain a little bit. It's like, it's like, you know, the first time you have to try and learn to spell banana. 
How do you know where to stop, right? That kind of thing. So the new Willem and Nunu. There's a lot more going on there from a visual perspective. Let's start with Nunu himself. If you take a look at... Since we can zoom in here. If you take a look at his clothes, right? You get these stitches that show that this thing was hand-stitched together. He's got this fur lining, but these designs swirling all across the cape. You get this hat that was clearly made for a child. Like, this is a child's fuzzy little animal hat that's made to make them happy with these little fake ears sitting on top of it and this adorable tuft of hair on top. You get these big gloves that look like they're two sizes too big for him because some, you know, well-meaning parent bought them so he could grow into them, which themselves have all kind of, you know, manual design. And they also look big and bulky and practical. Like, they look like the kind of gloves you put on your kid if your kid needs to be playing in the snow all day. And it's the same thing with the boots. And, like, much more about Nunu himself implies that there is a culture behind him, a specific culture, a specific culture with a specific aesthetic that, you know, that produces certain kinds of clothes. If you remember, if you've been on the channel before, one of the things I like to criticize Ash for a lot is that nothing about her outfit, nothing about how she looks, makes her look like she belongs in the frill yard. Like, she, she doesn't wear any fur on her at all whatsoever. She doesn't wear the big solid leather boots. She doesn't wear any clothes that imply that she lives in a snowy environment. She doesn't wear any clothes that imply she belongs in the snowy environment of the frill yard. Nuno, however, is very much the opposite of that. He does wear clothes that imply that his culture primarily values the, the, the ability of clothes to keep you warm. Like, that's the main thing about them. So for new Nunu, why do I hate saying that so much? Everything about him implies a culture that is not like, quite like our own. Now, still at this point, you could say, okay, but he could be some kind of kid who lives in the real world because he's not, he doesn't look like some, explicitly like some kind of fantasy hero. There's nothing explicitly magical just about him. And I think I tend to agree with that, but I think there's also kind of a point to keeping him just that little bit grounded in, in, in a kind of, like, in the sense that he could show up in a Disney cartoon or something like that, that was set in, like, a real-world high school, I don't know, whatever. But then you look at his companion, and Willem, well, he really couldn't exist anywhere but in a fantasy fairy tale. He really couldn't come out of anything except a child's imagination, really. And that's, by the way, that's part of the biography, which we're not going to get into that too much, but part of the biography is that Willem... When Nunu meets him, Willem is a big, terrifying monster yeti. But there's some magic stuff that happens, and because of the power of Nunu's imagination, Willem is transformed into this big, soft, cuddly-looking thing. Like, that's not necessarily his natural shape, but it's something that he's been shaped into because that's how Nunu sees him. So Willem, in their relationship, is essentially a, a, a reflection of Nunu's mind. And that's why they have the relationship that they do. But that's for the lower discussion. That's for another day. Let's look at Willem, like, without that context. We still have a creature who, like, I think there's a very conscious effort to look, take a look at a Miyazaki film and design a little bit by that. Like, I really do think there's a lot of My Neighbor Totoro in here. I really do think there's a lot of the cat bus from that movie, especially in there, in that everything about him is designed to be soft. There really is no hard edge on him, and even his claws, look at these rounded edges that they've got going on. There's barely anything pointy even about his teeth. He's not scary. He's not dangerous. He's a big, cuddly teddy bear, except for one thing, that lion face. Uh, some people pointed out on, on Reddit, and I tend to agree with them, that a lot about this version of Willem looks like uh, traditional Chinese guardian dragons. In fact, um... Specifically, I, I think of the one from uh, Mulan, the great stone dragon, um, who Mulan sits under and cries during, I think, one of her songs in the movie. I can't really remember. It's been a long time since I've watched that. And I, I and that to me was kind of interesting. It's, it's especially the curled mustache thing he's got going on with his glowing tattoos there that really lends him that little bit of an aspect of a Chinese dragon, which I thought was really interesting. Also, the fact that he's got these curly horns going on, that's also an identifying feature of uh, a lot of kinds of Asian uh, incarnations of what a dragon could be. And I thought that was a really interesting choice uh, because it ties him to... I mean, that would be something you would traditionally in League of Legends world expect to be tied to Ionia. But what it does from a real-world contextual standpoint is rather than tie 
this version of Nunu explicitly to any real world creature, they give him this slight lion face and the big bushy eyebrows and the curly mustache and the curly horns in order to tie him to a fantastical creature from our own world, a mythical creature, a dragon creature, something that doesn't exist in nature, something that really cannot be quite real. And so everything about Willem, just like from looking at his face, says this is a fantasy creature. This came out of someone's imagination. This isn't real. This couldn't exist in real life. The anatomy doesn't make sense. Like the, the way that it looks doesn't make sense. But do you know what it does look like? A dragon. And that's also why he's got the big fuzzy beard and like the big the, the big uh, fuzzy hairs to make him look more like a teddy bear, more cuddly. And then we get to the body and we get, yeah, it's kind of a bear body, sort of, but he's got six limbs. And those six limbs, like, we are so used to in our world, like, most creatures will have four limbs if they're mammals. Like, that's, that's, that's really the, you know, birds have two legs and birds have two arms. They're not mammals, I know that. Right, and every lizard has four legs, usually. Uh, and crocodiles have four legs. And there's so many creatures in our world, we are very used to seeing them with four legs. Especially mammals and especially big fuzzy bear lion looking things like what Willem looks like. So giving him those six limbs all of a sudden goes, wait, hang on, that doesn't that doesn't comply with reality. And so it, it kind of gives you the impression immediately just by seeing that extra set of limbs that you go, oh, okay, this is not real. This is fantasy. This is a fantasy creature. This came out of someone's imagination. And then you see all the soft lines and the soft curves and the cutesy decorations all over him. And you go, a child's imagination. This looks childish. This looks... Like, because imagine if Willem had been designed with a more realistic approach. Imagine if all his teeth had been really sharp. Imagine if his claws had been really pointy. Imagine if he hadn't been nearly this sort of fuzzy and fluffy, but instead had been lean and muscly rather than being big and soft and round. Imagine if he had had small black eyes instead of the big bright glowing ones. Imagine if his horns had been sharp and pointy, clearly meant for jousting with other animals. What kind of interpretation would you have of a creature that looked like that? Well, Immediately, because it's dangerous, we I think we would be more inclined to consider it real, in the sense that it presents something like a real danger, but because this doesn't present a real danger, just like your imagination doesn't present a real danger, if you can explore fantasy safely in your mind, Willemp looks fantastical, like in the very literal sense of the word, he looks fantastical. And I think it works so well. And of course, the, the use of tattoos, glowing tattoos around his body, makes it explicit alongside the glowing eyes that he's also a magical creature. Like, anytime you add a glow, anything that glows to a character, that instantly, that's that's a very good visual signifier of, oh, okay, so this character's magical then. So that, like, on, on that sense, there's so much more communicated about the world that Willem and Nunu inhabit in this particular character design, that this is a magical world, this is a fantastical world. Their relationship has some sort of magic to it. Nunu isn't quite of, of you know, any real-world culture, and Willem almost uh, completely certainly isn't from any, any real-world situation because he can't be real. Which brings us to the relationship between the two characters. And this is where Riot had a stroke of genius. New Willem doesn't wear any straps. He doesn't wear anything human on him whatsoever. There's no straps, there's no attachments, he doesn't wear a bag, he doesn't wear a backpack, he doesn't wear a harness or a saddle of any kind. And that's actually kind of a big deal because it changes completely the relationship between the two characters. Because what do humans do to things that we want to ride? Well, we construct saddles for them. That is, that is the symbol for like a horse or for anything. If you put a saddle on a bear, it will look domesticated. And that's what the saddle implies in human culture, is that once you put a saddle on something, once you put a bridle on it, once you put a, a leash on it, you have domesticated it, you own it, you have dominion over it. And that's what the saddle on Willem here, unintentionally, communicates, is that Nunu has dominion over him. And then, of course, he also holds on to his, the top of his head, to his hair like that, which, grabbing anyone's hair is generally not a sign of mutual respect, it's a sign of domination. No matter what the context is, and I know some perverts are gonna be down in the comments talking about, well, actually, we do it. No, no, it's a, it's a sign of domination. I, you know, let's just be clear about that, and that's why it's sometimes fun to do. <clears throat> so that's a very different relationship with him sitting on top of him, you know, looking out, dominating, holding on to his hair, being in a saddle that's strapped onto the poor creature, as compared to this, where 
Nuno is just kind of riding on top of him, holding onto the horns that happen to be there, but weren't created for his benefit. He's not wearing a backpack for Nunu's benefit. He's not wearing a harness or a bridle. They have a much more equitable relationship. And by the way, making uh, Willop's face much bigger, it has a couple of effects. First of all, it communicates much, much better that he has the consume ability. Like, you look at this champion right here, and among the many things that it might be able to communicate that it can do, eating giant creatures whole really isn't one of them because his mouth is freaking tiny, his face is freaking tiny. So by giving Willem a larger face, first of all, that makes him more adorable. Anything, you, the larger the head in relationship to the body, the more adorable. Something generally tends to be up until a certain point. But it also communicates much better that this, this guy can eat stuff, like he can open his mouth and swallow things whole, but cleverly, they haven't really given him that many teeth. Right? There isn't like rows upon rows of giant sharp teeth or even soft teeth, like rounded teeth sitting out in here. There's mostly just a, little, a few little teeth to communicate, yeah, this guy can bite you. But otherwise, he's kind of just kind of soft and pleasant and round. So giving him a much larger face, because the human brain is programmed, like literally on a, the genetic level, we are programmed to seek faces. We look for faces first, like it's the first thing we look for in anything. With Old Nunu, which of the two has the bigger face? Well, they pretty much have the same size face, but one of them is above the other, one of them is holding on to each other. Here, Willem has the bigger face, like he has the bigger part of the character to which a human mind will gravitate, will identify with. And in terms of the relationship between the two characters, that gives him more primacy, it makes him more important in their relationship. Which is fact also true to game, like in-game, they have a partnership, but let's be real, Willemp takes the damage and Willemp deals most of the damage. That's that's really how most of their relationship work from the in-game footage we've seen so far. Nunu helps, but Willemp is the bruiser, like he's the one who does that. So, so from that perspective, it tells us visually that this guy, like he's perhaps a little bit more important to the gameplay function of the character than the little dude sitting on top of him. But equally, Nunu's face is also much more clear and visible. Like, without the parka, without the hood kind of encircling his entire face, which just kind of traps it in there in this, this little window to his head. Because the, the face is open, because the hat can be bouncing around and can be flapping out, you get the jaw, you get the neck, you get everything is much more open about him. Which, by the way, also from a, a, the perspective of communicating the character, Having a character be all tied up, like all bunched up in something that, 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 that's really sort of snugly holding on to them, tying them together. The visual symbol that that communicates is someone who's buttoned up, who is, who's not forthright, who's not honest, um, who's not open, essentially. Like, like that's, that's one of the oldest visual symbols in art, is like, in terms of how do you present a character with their, with their clothes, is if a character has their jacket open, exposing their chest to the world, that is a visual signifier for honesty, for openness, for, you know, for, for a clear and obvious heart shown to all the world. Whereas with a, if a character is very, very buttoned up, what does that tend to signify? Well, formality, stiffness, perhaps association with military tradition, like those are sort of the visual signifiers that are associated with being all buttoned up. And so new 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 good lord, that again, he doesn't wear a button-up, he doesn't wear anything that kind of restricts him and ties it down, he wears a big flowy parka on on his shoulders that can kind of fly around and float in the wind and, and flap around, that's open, more, much more open to the world, his face is much more open to the world, so everything about the character does a much better job of communicating that this is a fun-loving, adventure-loving, happy kid who's out on, an, on, a, on you know, a, a big grand adventure with his big fuzzy furry bear friend. Right, so the relationship between the two characters in that sense is better communicated, but also, I think that was I got off on a tangent. The relationship between the two characters in terms of power is markedly different from Old Nunu because this is this guy isn't directing that guy. He's not telling him specifically necessarily telling him specifically where to go. He's not commanding him. He's just sitting on his on his on. Um, he's getting a ride. Like he's getting a ride. He's not. He's not commanding a ride. He's not saddling up and telling the thing where to go. He's getting a ride from his friend because they have an equitable relationship. And this, by the way, comes across spectacularly in all of their animations as well. All of their animations tend to be very focused on Willemp and Nunu's relationship with each other. There's a whole lot of Nunu and Willemp looking at each other, Nunu kind of swinging around on, on Willemp's horns and Willemp kind of picking him up, scooping him up, carrying him along. All that stuff is much more expressed in their animation. And again, 
old League of Legends, you probably couldn't do those kinds of animation uh, flourishes bet w between two characters. You probably couldn't even split one champion up into two characters, but for the new one, it works a lot better. Like, the relationship between them is so much more communicated. The nature of Willem as a magical creature who's not quite, who like, who's, whose reality is shaped by magic is much more clearly communicated. The nature of the culture that Nunu comes from is much more clearly communicated. The fact that he is a child is more clearly communicated. Like, compare his silly animal fuzzy furry hat with the little tufts and the eyes and the nose and the ears to just the hood. It's a hood. It doesn't it doesn't say anything about the character. It's just a warm hood because he lives somewhere cold. Compare that to how much this like who would wear that kind of hat and you get a picture of the kind of person that Nunu is. So yeah, like surprising no one. New Nunu and Willem are just better on every front on every axis than old Willem and Nunu. Having said that, I know for a fact, because there will always, 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 this will always, always happen, a lot of people are going to be upset about the loss of old Nunu. We talked about that in, uh, in uh, one of my last videos about, you know, humans generally tend to have loss aversion more than, you know, win pleasure. Like, we, we tend to be more worried about losing stuff than we're happy about gaining stuff. So, old Nunu is going to go away. And he's never ever gonna come back, and that's for the people who have invested a lot in him, for whom he was their favorite troll champion, their favorite, like, let's just not take shit seriously, let's just run down mid, let's just do something stupid in the jungle, let's just play silly. That loss, it's probably gonna hurt, because this guy isn't a meme, like these guys are. Right, so, so the meme is gonna be dead a little bit, and instead you just get to play. I sympathize with that, but I will not cry a single frozen tear for the death of old Nunu and Willem, because they weren't good. They were barely passable. They they were just about enough for the help the game getting off the ground, but they had no function in telling the story of the Freljord, in expanding the universe of League of Legends, in, in telling any kind of in, interesting or emotional story of their own, that never really happened. They didn't have any lore content. Hopefully new Nunu and Willem will. I'm really rooting for um, Willem and Nunu to have an adventure with Braum. I think that would be fucking fun. I would love the character dynamic between those people. Uh, that 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 would rule. That would freaking rule. And I would really love for old champions like Braum to maybe get new voice lines to reflect the fact that Nunu is in the game now. Braum must have some kind of voice line for Nunu. Come on, bring the voice actor back. You have the money, right? Come on. Anyway, that was what the hell was I talking about? All right, we're at the end of the video. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I did a, like a dramatic reading of like a, a dumb article about millennials. And it turns out it went kind of, a, a portion of that got posted to Tumblr, and it went all viral. And that's weird. So, like, if you're from that, and you've been watching through this video the whole way, I don't... I'm glad that I could do other stuff than scream at a stupid article to, to amuse you. Thank you very much for watching this far. And this is mostly what the channel is. We talk about character design, we talk about story communication when it comes to various characters and video games and also other stuff like I think I'm gonna be doing some animated movie content when I can find the bloody time and if you like this then hi hello stay subscribed or subscribe if you aren't hit the, the, the bell like button algorithms stuff and if you are so inclined like if 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 um if you've enjoyed this video if you have a spare dollar that that you can you know that you are okay with parting with uh, I do have a Patreon that could use that spare dollar because it pays the bills. It keeps the lights on. It keeps me in an apartment, which is nice. And I have food and I can feed my pets and stuff like that. So if you have a spare dollar that you don't mind, then patreon.com slash caster comics. There's a link down in the description. and also going to be coming up on screen in a minute. I would very much appreciate it. If you don't want to do any of that, of course, that is completely okay. Now... If you did not like this video, congratulations on sticking out this far. I, I don't have the mental fortitude to stay so long with a video that I don't like, but there is a dislike button down below that you can click. Now, the legend says that the dislike button contains the map to a secret buried treasure, and those who click on it will have a chance to find that map, and that map will take them on the greatest adventures of their lives, and at the end of that long road, 
at the end of all the trials and tribulations behind the corpse of the dead pirate king Lafoe, we'll find the greatest treasure known to man, the friends you made along the way. Which you can also just find by hitting the like button and staying right here because we will be your friends now. We will be your friends forever. Thank you very much for watching.